As you all know about the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, we decided to take a look at both sides air combat strength. Russia would not attempt any significant military action without extensive use of air power. With that in mind, now is a prime opportunity to take a detailed look at the respective aviation assets that can be brought to bear by Russia and Ukraine in the region, and how their capabilities compare. The Ukrainian Air Force headquarters is located in the city of Vinitsha. When the Soviet Union dissolved in 1991, many aircraft were left on Ukrainian territory. Ever since, the Ukrainian Air Force has been downsizing and upgrading its forces. The main inventory of the Air Force still consists of Soviet-made aircraft, currently 36,300 personnel, and 144 aircraft are in service in the Ukrainian Air Force and Air Defense Forces. Ukraine still possesses the world's 27th largest air force, and the 7th largest air force in Europe, largely due to the ability of its domestic defense industry and its Antonov subsidiary to maintain its older aircraft. The anti-aircraft rocket force within Air Force became predominant after the merging of the Air Force and the Ukrainian Air Defense Forces. It allowed the armed forces of Ukraine to adopt the tri-service structure common to most modern armed forces. The Air Defense of Ukraine performs key tasks in the protection of Ukraine's sovereignty and the inviolability of its borders and airspace. And it is intended to prevent any enemy air and missile strikes to defend the most important administrative political and industrial centers, to aid in the concentration of army and navy units, to intercept enemy aircraft and other military objects, and to protect against enemy ballistic and cruise missile strikes. Ukrainian air combat inventory is consistent of MiG-29, Soviet Union-made, plus Sukhoi Su-24, and Sukhoi Su-25, and as well as Sukhoi Su-27 and about the UAVs we have RQ-11 Raven bought from United States and there is the Barakter TB-2 bought from Turkey which six of them is in service, whereas 48-1 is on order yet to be received. About the air defense Ukraine is using mostly mobile SAM systems. S-300 PT, which are made by Soviet Union, 2K-12 Cub 9K-37 Buck 9K-330 Taurus 125 Neva, Pechora. It is true that these are pretty old and outdated, but in the correct combat strategies they can be quite effective. Anyway, let's get to Russia. The Russian armed forces are organized within five military districts, which are administrative organizations based on geographical territories, each with a headquarters that administers the military formations based in that region. In a worst-case scenario for a new Russian intervention, as outlined by Ukrainian military intelligence in November, Russian forces would cross the Ukrainian border from the east and attack the annexed Crimea in the south, as well as launching an amphibious assault on the city of Odessa. Much of Russia's border areas with Ukraine, as well as the critical frontiers with the NATO member states of Poland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, come under the military responsibility of the Western Military District, or WMD. As well as the Russian Aerospace Forces, or VKS, units in the Western region, the WMD is responsible for Russian ground troops within the region. As well as the entire Baltic fleet, which also includes its own aircraft units, with responsibility for the defense of Moscow and St. Petersburg, the WMD has the most capable ground-based air defense coverage in Russia. Since the annexation of Crimea, a new composite division has been established on this territory, with three aviation regiments, this is the 27th Composite Aviation Division with its headquarters in Belbek, Crimea. The 27th SAD consists of flying units at the following bases Bardeskoy, home to the 37th Composite Aviation Regiment this consists of two squadrons, a bomber unit with C-24 MIGs, and an attack unit with upgraded C-25 SM aircraft. Belbek, the 38th Fighter Aviation Regiment at this base has two fighter squadrons. The first of these is equipped with C-27SM fighters, while the second operates C-27SM-3 and C-30M-2 fighters. Zankwe, the Rotary Wing Regiment in Crimea, is the 39th Helicopter Regiment which received one squadron with Ka-52s, a second with Mi-28M and Mi-35M helicopters, and a third with a mi 8 Anch. In addition to these, further strike capabilities are provided by the Russian Navy, which has the 43rd Independent Naval Attack Aviation Regiment stationed at Saki in Crimea. This regiment flies 12 C-30SMs, 6 C-24 MIGs, and 6 C-24 MRs Krimsk, part of the 1st Composite Aviation Division The 3rd Composite Aviation Regiment of Krimsk operates two squadrons of C-27SM fighters, and a handful of C-30M2 trainers, one squadron of non-upgraded C-27s, plus a detachment of Ka-27 helicopters. Milorovo, also under the 1 SAD is the 31 I of Milorovo. Formerly a MiG-29 operator, it is upgraded to the C-30SM, with a total of 24 aircraft divided between two squadrons. Located less than 20 miles from the Ukrainian border, Yudlovsk. The 368th Attack Aviation Regiment under the 1SAF is a long-term operator of the C-25, flying the type in Afghanistan in the 1980s. After transferring one Frogfoot squadron to Bardeskoye in Crimea, it now has two squadrons with upgraded C-25SM and C-25SM-3 aircraft. Morozovsk. Last of the one SAD regiments is the 559th Bomber Aviation Regiment, which has three squadrons, with a total of 36 C-34 aircraft, making it one of the most powerful tactical bomber units within the entire BKS. Marinovka. 
Marinovka near Volgograd is home to the 11th Composite Aviation Regiment, flying the Su-24M and Su-24 Mr. Primorsko Actorsk. Another Su-25 unit is at Primorsko Actorsk, the 960th Attack Aviation Regiment having fraud in Chechnya and in Georgia. The Army Aviation units within the SMD follow a very similar pattern to their counterparts in the WMD. There is a single brigade. The 16th Army Aviation Brigade, at Zernigrid with two squadrons of Mi-8 transport helicopters, two squadrons of Mi-28M and Mi-35M attack helicopters, and a detachment of Mi-26 heavy transport helicopters, then there are also two independent Army Aviation Regiments. These are the 55th Independent Helicopter Regiment to Korinovsk with a squadron of Mi-8 Amch transport helicopters, a squadron of Mi-28M and Mi-35M attack helicopters and a squadron of Ka-52 attack helicopters, and the 487 OVP at Budyonsk, that has a transport squadron with Mi-8 Amch and Mi-8 MTV-5 helicopters, and two combat squadrons with Mi-24, Mi-28M, and Mi-35M Army Aviation helicopters, proved an important component in the earlier seizure of Crimea. Unlike its Russian counterpart, Ukrainian Army Aviation is a separate branch and not part of the Air Force. It relies almost exclusively on older versions of the Mi-8 and Mi-24, with around 50 hips and 30 or more Mi-24s currently active. On paper, Ukraine's available air power is hardly a match for just one Russian military district, let alone the VKS at large. However Ukraine has gained valuable combat experience from the conflict in the east of the country, Ukrainian pilots are aware of the threat posed by manned portable air defense systems, and other air defense systems that have been fielded by pro-Russian forces during that campaign, but back in 2014, the threat posed by short-range air defense systems, effectively grounded the PS, and Ukrainian army aviation, and Kyiv has been reluctant to deploy significant air assets in the eastern Donbas region since then. At the same time, the extent of the Russian ground-based air defense umbrella is such that, with the forward deployment of additional assets, it could reach far into Ukrainian territory even from the Russian side of the border, creating a sanitized zone in which opposing air operations were made almost impossible. All this would be further enabled by the availability of A-50 mainstay airborne early warning aircraft, providing a look-down capability from on high and filling in any gaps in ground-based radar coverage caused by terrain. As part of this strategy, Ukrainian airbases and any stationary radars or command posts would also be prime targets for standoff strikes using air and ground-launched missiles, which include ballistic Iskander M-types, as well as caliber cruise missiles launched by the Black Sea Fleet, further hampering Ukrainian counter-air operations. Russia's long-range aviation, which is increasingly adding conventional weapons to its arsenal, could launch additional cruise missile strikes. Overall, Russia's standoff cruise missile capabilities and overall capacity have evolved a lot in the last decade or so, and would allow Moscow to limit the risk to manned assets when striking fixed targets farther west. I hope that we don't witness this war, and this all will stay as unconfirmed theories.